everyone, welcome to The Flow, or as we like to call it, the meeting before the meeting. such a good groove isn't I love it? it we're all here dancing oh john you came up with that didn't you uh well i, I played a a track and you said you liked it yeah. and so i said well let's listen to some other ones oh well there we go yeah so there for a second i thought you kind of designed that beat for a minute when he said it like, like you actually laid it down you could have owned it for, uh, your, for your honest you know i we're keeping it spiritual here yeah yeah we can't lie <clears throat> and no. so Welcome to the Flow Podcast. We're going to have a good time today. We're not going to fight the flow. Mm-mm. I am. We it, it was brought to our attention that uh, by someone who actually listened to our podcast. Mm. I was One very, of our tens of listeners. I was so shocked at who it was. Nice. Yeah, it was my father-in-law. Hey, shout, let's give him a shout out. Shout out Willie. Willie. Man. He was just like, you guys didn't announce yourself. You guys didn't, you know, say who you were. And I was like, you actually listened to it? He said, well, yeah. I was like, wow. I love your father-in-law. So before we introduce ourselves, can I tell a funny on him? He's Let's good. It. Let's do it. I met. I texted him. This is like years ago. I texted him. <laughs> and he replied back a, in exactly a year later <laughs> to my text and answered it just like it was... <laughs> A recent text, <laughs> and it oh. made me laugh so hard. Could you imagine having an unopened text message for that long? <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, it'll drive me nuts. So, so you're Ty, I'm Ke- Kevin. Yep. Okay, preach. That'd be preach. And I'm John. Mm-hmm. Do you have an AKA? No, just just John. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. So, I mean, you're the pastor. Preach, yep. obviously. You're yeah. holding us together <laughs> in this podcast. Let's give that to the Holy Spirit. That's right. I, I don't. I don't need any more pressure in a podcast <laughs> to hold something together. Let's just say the Holy Spirit is holding us together. That's here, right. And that is the flow. We are not going to fight. John, what do you do around here? A little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. That's a good answer. Yeah. Cool. Back when I worked on the farm, we just did whatever. Wes, shout out to Wes. Mm. Um, he's my father-in-law. There you go. And we just did whatever he said. And then we, I just started calling us, instead of Winding Brook Farms, Winding Brook Miscellaneous. <laughs> you know, because we could be combining a field one, one week, and the next week we're ripping a pool out of some random person's yard. You know what I mean? It's like, what? <laughs> it's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> So that's it's pretty broad. That's John. Yeah, that's John. Yeah, <laughs> leading someone to Christ one day and doing whatever the next day. Mm-hmm. Servant of servants. I love it. I wanted to go back real quick. You see, you said you don't like having unopened text messages. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, this is like for a year. <laughs> for a year. But, it's man, how, would you, how would you How would you feel if I told you I had two hundred and thirty four? What? That's tough. 234. Oh, that makes so much sense. Let me see how I have 18. You're terrible at texting back. That's why. <laughs> oh. Most of our uh, group chats I just haven't opened. 230? But one group Bro. chat could be a bunch of those. Oh, right. for sure. I think the, the staff group chat is like half of that right so now. So you don't open your staff. I just thread. I just read it on wow. the, I just want to read on the front page and then, uh-huh. and then I, but the front page doesn't say the whole text, John. It just says like the first it, it usually, part of it. It usually has most <laughs> of the text. Oh my goodness. So John just outed himself that he doesn't read his own staff text. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of times I don't but you know if I he shows I, up. I, I look at so it and fun. see if it's a uh, something. You know. You're still led maybe it's the spirit that leads him mm. to the right spot. Mm. It's like Philip in the Bible. He just like <laughs> disappeared. Now he's just <laughs> somewhere where he just needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's great. Good. I think you, John, since since you're going, I think you ought to just say what you probably want to say right now regarding. Yes, I, I, I would like to give a, a shout out to Justin. Um, he listened to the podcast, and he's a proud Steelers fan. 
Oh, wow. And I, I just think, you know, give him a shout out for repping the, the black and yellow. Mm. We won yesterday. Some other teams did not win yesterday. Oof. And uh, so, you know, picked up two games on two <laughs> divisional <laughs> rivals. So that that's always a good day. Oh, that's tough. I mean, it's real. Shout out to Justin. Shout out. Yes. Do you know this guy? I do not. <laughs> what? Right on. <laughs> <laughs> I know him, though. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. Steelers fans. The Ravens are going to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, it's already in the, the playbook, so maybe. My, my wife last night at our disciple group, like before we got going, mm-hmm. she rattled off like the standings in the Bengals conference mm-hmm. in order. I am looked at her. I'm like. What are you saying? I never heard you say like teams like this in <laughs> order, right? Did you watch the game? Yeah. I listened to part of it on the way home from lunch. Mhm. I heard what I heard was not promising. Mm-mm. Got home. I watched one play. It was third and 9. Mhm. The Texans got a penalty. It was third and 14. They right up the gut, man, right in the Bengals' face. I saw that one play. I'm like, they're losing. They're going to lose. Yep. I took a nap. Hey. Missed the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. It got exciting there at the end. I heard it got exciting. Yeah. But I'm still glad turnovers. I didn't watch it. Oh, yeah. we lost. Oh. Yeah. That happens. But it got exciting. Yeah. You, you got know. something else to say about it, John? I do. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. They lost to the Texans. Texans are a good team. Uh, but you know their QB has played phenomenally. He claims to be a Christian, so you know it's like he threw it out. It was the first thing he said at the post game interview. She asked, "Whatever you know, how'd you do it?" And he said, "I just want to give give thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." Oh, and then went right go. into it. It's yeah, like, so I mean, it's kind of hard to root against a guy like that. Yep, right on. Way to go! And he's a former Buckeye, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? What's, his name? What's the what was the quarterback's name? Stroud. Stroud. Yeah, okay. CJ Stroud. It was good. Shout out to Brother in Christ. Yeah. I, I felt, and I said this yesterday, speaking of that, I feel like this year, out of all the years I've watched pro football, that so many of them have like shouted out the name of Jesus, have prayed openly in in like one on one interviews like that. Like uh, the Niners QB. Yeah, uh Purdy. God bless you. Go ahead. <sighs> we all heard it in our mics. <laughs> We're in a small room. I muted my mic. You muted just his to mic think. and coughed in our mics. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's been pretty cool. It's always cool to see people with a platform of some kind be humble enough to recognize somebody bigger than them, yeah. God, who let them have it. And then give glory to the Lord. Yeah. It's always cool. Especially when, like, like there's this, like, friction between, like, church and sports. hmm You know? And so it's always awesome to see somebody that did excel on that side, like, be able to keep Christ right at the center of their personal life and magnify his name. For sure. And it's like, regardless, who said there was a Paul, like, regardless, like, Christ is preached. You know, the name of Christ is out there. So, yeah. regardless, you're getting attacked by the ficus. I, I am. Is that what that is? Yeah, uh, some type of, I think it's a hibiscus. Is a ficus a flower, too? Mm-hmm. No, it's a fake tree. Oh, okay. I think, right? John? It's not It's not a hibiscus. You don't think? I, I don't know that. But that's I not. thought a hibiscus was a food. It's a, it's a it's, <laughs> hibiscus is a shrub. Oh, okay, it's not like a hibachi. It's not like a seasoning of any kind either. Uh, maybe, maybe I someone, don't know maybe if someone's it is bottled the bottled essence of hibiscus <laughs> and sold it. <laughs> if they haven't, that's us guys. We that's our side gig. That's awesome. We're gonna get some hibiscus we, seasoning. Yeah, or anointing oil. Like there you go, hibiscus <laughs> anointing oil. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> what about yesterday? What was what was good yesterday at church? Yesterday being Sunday, today mm. being Monday. That's right. Before our staff meeting mm-hmm. that starts here in just a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
Well, we had a pretty good uh, testimony given yesterday. Wilburn. World War II vet. He came and I asked him, he, he was planning on doing it for praise giving, which mm-hmm. is coming up. But um, we just opened the door to do it yesterday, which was like worked out perfectly, I think, with how the entire day went. For sure. I thought that was awesome. He's yep. an awesome man. Somebody asked me later on, um, they say, they said about what does he think about like what's going on in the world right now? And I just said, when you talk to Wilburn, what we got yesterday is what you always get. Mm-hmm. Somebody who quickly, God puts a tear in their eye of thankfulness. He lifts Jesus up every time he can. Every time you talk to him, it's all about how good the Lord is. Yeah. And um, that's what we got yesterday among many other things but that was that was awesome yeah i was saying to myself on the way in like shout out to wilburn oh yeah we have to yeah a world war ii veteran yeah that that stood up how old is he 98 98 and yeah shared his heart yeah it's good um yeah i was telling myself on the way in you know because we talked to ourselves on the way in (laughs) This morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like thinking of yesterday and the podcast. Like I'm I'm just waiting for like something like wrong or bad to come up about yesterday. You know what I mean? Like not like something something always happens, something bad happens or wrong happens or you know yeah. we're you know, Jesus was glorified and we worshipped him. But like I was wondering what that sound was. What happened? The computer. Is that Siri? I guess. Whew. Get out of here, Siri. Yeah, she's trying to listen to us. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, but like, that's that's how awesome of a day it was yeah. yesterday, through and through. Yeah, it was just like I'm just waiting for something around the corner to be like, hey, this happened, you know. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, just like uh, Keith says, shout out to Keith mm. Locklear, another veteran. Yep, and uh, deacon at our church. If you want to find. Uh, Something under a rock, just keep flipping up rocks. Mm-hmm. That's right. But if you don't want to find it, don't flip up rocks. That's right. <laughs> you know, so you know, there's uh, there's some some of that to think about too. That's Let's right. just surf that wave of yesterday. It was a sweet day. Oh my goodness, worship was sweet. Wes, did you give a a shabak? Uh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear it? I thought I heard a little bit of a. That's the shout, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought I heard a little shout at the beginning of one of the songs or in the middle of the song. Sometimes I went for it. Well, sometimes I just like shut off, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> which I guess I'm supposed to do, you know. And uh, don't fight the flow. I don't fight the flow up there. Sometimes I have it. It's you know I'm I'm a person. I'm a human being, you know. And so I, sometimes I fight the flow. But we, we all have done that. Mm. I had somebody. Uh, come to me uh, and say, <clears throat> you know, the Bible says, lift up your holy hands in the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. I had somebody come to me once and say, I I'm, I want to, but I'm afraid what people think of me if I do. Now, there's all kinds of issues with that statement. Right. But I said, well, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. I mean, if you don't feel led to do that, you don't have to do that. But... If you feel led to do that and you don't, that's just a very, very subtle way to grieve the Holy Spirit. That's good. Quench the Spirit. Yeah. And so it was, it's like we all do that from time to time for whatever reason. A yeah. lot of times it's because of what somebody else will think, which is really sad mm-hmm. that we think like that. I would. I would suggest lifting up them hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's biblical, and uh, there's something so yeah. freeing about it. Oh, Emily took a picture of a sweet little kid. We won't say the kid's name on here, but sweet little girl. Just the sweetest. Every little girl here is like the sweetest little girl. Mm-hmm. But this girl is like the sweetest little girl. And it was hands to heaven pray time, mm-hmm. kids. <clears throat> and... You know, the kids pray, but the adults just kind of watch the kids pray. So 
Emily, shout out to my wife, love you, babe. Uh, she takes a picture of this little girl mm-hmm. on the in the front, just like completely undone, hands to heaven. Like you could tell she was genuine. Yeah. And her, she had like a moment with God, and like God like spoke to her heart and says like This is how I see you when you pray. Oh wow! Well. It's just how you see this little girl right now. And I'm like, man, that's good. Yeah, that's awesome. So I said, send me that picture. I want that picture. Yes. So it was just it was just a sweet, sweet day yesterday. Truly, Polly. Shout out to Polly. That lady yes. is awesome. Yes. Every no. everybody who meets Polly smiles. Hey, can you kill that phone? No. Oh. <laughs> Hey, we're in the middle of something. <laughs> I don't even know how it, it came on. Uh, my computer went off. Your phone went off. John's next. So, Oh, I think I'm hooked up to the, the Bluetooth thing here. Because I heard it in my headphones. Oh, yeah. It's, it's on silent. So if you would have answered that, it, they would have came on our podcast. Yeah. Ooh. I don't think I we wanted should, to. should like, make a rule where like, if you're in our church and you call us between 8 and 9 a.m. on Monday mornings, <laughs> You have a chance of going live. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be live, but you go. You're on the podcast. I don't think I wanted them to be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't anybody for the church, but oh, sales call or something. Yeah. <clears throat> oh man. No, yeah, it's a good day yesterday. Yeah. Polly's awesome. Polly's awesome. Had a couple people baptized. Yes, which was awesome. Canaan, Can- you Canaan. got to lead him to the Lord this week. Yep. A quam. Praise God. It was awesome. And uh, I know we talked about it, but it was a. Uh, a surprise uh, on on Sunday, and uh, you know, typically you're the one baptizing people, and so I'm I always get excited when I get to do that too. And uh, but I know that we talked about it, but on Sundays it seems like everything else that we that was discussed prior to Sunday mm-hmm. just goes out the window. It's just like all right, we're focused on Sunday now, and that's yeah. you know that's that's on me. But uh, yeah, you were like you're gonna baptize them. Right like, up, right on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that we talked about it before after yeah. I was thinking about it, but I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you put your guitar down. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever baptized anybody, John? I have not baptized We're anyone. We're going to get John in on that. Mm-hmm. There's some, there, it's always, it's like there's like this pressure, even though... <laughs> <laughs> We're just no servants of God in this local church that are just helping this person do what God wants them to do. Yeah, but we there is like a weird pressure that you feel when you're doing it. You send any funny baptisms? Or any? Uh, no, but I do remember when I, when I was getting baptized. Uh, Wendell Birdsong he said, "Make sure that they don't hold you under set underwater for more than eight seconds." He said that that's unbiblical. It's like seven seconds is the cleansing, you know, <laughs> never perfection, but eight, they've uh, overstepped their bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine holding somebody under for seven seconds? <laughs> I I held Kanan under just a just a tick longer. I think he I got did all nervous. snort when he came up. Yeah. <laughs> poor Kanan. Sorry, buddy. I got nervous. I always I always do the hands wrong. Like I I, <laughs> I saw you I every saw time. You. <laughs> I'm always thinking like, okay, this is right, but I'm like, well, wait a second, no, my hands need need to be behind his head. So I, I don't know if there's <laughs> a, a right switch. or wrong though. I don't yeah. think there's like a because it's like, hey, on that. and then you you know you give yeah. him the dunk. Oh man, I tripped up on the words. I'm just like, oh, it's nervous. You know, you get nervous when you do that. I'm like, man, I don't want next wanna... quam kid. John's baptizing him. That yes. gets saved. Which hope, yeah. I mean, there's there was two more, uh, maybe even three. One of the ladies was talking to a uh, uh, first time cool. visitor uh, that night too, and uh, cool. and so I told the two um, next next week come back and yeah you you tell me how you're going to tell your friend how to be saved like what you say mm-hmm. you know which yeah. is awesome yeah. and to use that on the kids and yeah. so we'll see what happens this Wednesday. Sweet. And for our tens of listeners who don't go to this church, don't know what QAM is, mm. K-W-A-M, That's Kids right. with a Mission. Mm-hmm. It's our midweek kids uh, emphasis. Yep. And it's just been growing. Yeah. Uh, been moving around a lot, but now we're at the church uh, officially, and we're 
pushing forward to the the next building project, which is the kids wing. Yeah. And we're going to fill it up. Yes, we are. Yeah. The Lord will. That's right. Yes. So. Is it, is it yay or nay on celebrating Christmas before Thanksgiving has happened? For me? When you when you say celebrating, like putting your Christmas, putting your decorations up, it's already up. It's already up. Yep. Saturday night we put it up. Um. What did we start? Monday. Something like that. Last Monday. Last think, Monday you put them up. I think so. When do you, when do you guys put them up? I have photo evidence. Uh, not usually. Not yet. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Like, we're silly. I, I'll get silly. <laughs> so your vote is no. Um, That's what I'm assuming. I don't really have a preference. Gotcha. But we, yes. I'm like the guy that carries stuff in, and then my wife and kids put it all together kind of thing. So while I'm taking down fall stuff, I'm just like, bringing a box, taking a box, and then they are unpacking it. And um, we always turn on Christmas music Mm -hmm. in the house. We crank it up. We're dancing around the house, just getting down. Yeah. And um, and then put the stuff up, hot chocolate. The kids make hot chocolate for us. Then we sit down and watch a Christmas movie that night. So... Santa Love Claus it. won. Yes. So it was the choice for this year. Love it. So we got ours up. See, I'm kind of the exact opposite of that one. Like, uh, you're just carrying it in. They get taken care of. Well, I guess it's not the exact opposite, but like, I'm, I go and get everything and then I put it up too. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, my wife is like, Nine months pregnant. Yeah, so. let's give her some credit here. Yeah, shout out to my wife, Katie. <laughs> shout love out her. Katie. Yeah, <laughs> he does love you. And uh, you know, but she did take down the fall decorations, which That's is sweet. Which is we don't have many of those, but we went uh, real real light this year. Yeah, for, we put the tree up, and that was yeah like our Christmas light. I love outside Christmas lights. I would yeah. put my whole house in lights, but <laughs> uh, and Liam, my son, he loves them as well. Yeah. Every kid loves Christmas They're lights. Like, hey, you know, he's a, yeah. And uh, so instead of putting them up, I just plugged in a strand of lights and just kind of like tossed them out in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> and so at night, like that's, that's, that's all, so good. <laughs> that's all my Christmas lights, just this <laughs> random pile of lights on the ground. My favorite light system is the one, have you seen it, where there's like just like one strand of lights on the house and then you've got like the Grinch with the, you know, mm-hmm. the gun that sucks the Christmas lights in it. Yeah. That's like the simplest, easiest. You did something, but you didn't have to do a whole lot. Makes sense. You know, and people can get a a laugh. It's good. Good decoration. Do you have any unique Christmas traditions in your home when it comes to a Christmas tree or ornaments or decorating time? Anything that jumps out that you, like anything unique? I don't know about anything uh, unique. We did have a... Bad streak of Christmas trees falling over. <laughs> Ooh. Like, do you do, did you do real trees or fake trees? Real, real trees. Real trees. Nice. Do you do real or fake? Fake now. Same here. Yeah. Fake. So, they fell over? Yeah, they were they were too lopsided, and the, the base didn't have enough support for them, so they just... Mm. And then, you just keep setting them back up, and they keep falling, or do you just build a new base, or what? Oh, we found that putting a tire around the base works well. What do you like? Do you yeah, put something like, in the tire? Take, take the tree out of the base and put the tire on the base. The tire on the base. Oh, okay. Do you nice. weight the tire down at all? Mm-hmm. No. Tip. That's a life hack. Oh, man. There for you, real tree people. Yeah. It's Good. covered up with a blanket. Nobody knows. There you go. Nice. I feel like. When my boys get older, we'll go to real trees. You know, right now it's just lugging around a a two year old and uh, going to be a newborn baby. 
to go get, you know, or a one-year-old, three and a one-year-old would it be next year? Yeah. To frolic. They would love it, but it's like, old dad's just down there cutting the tree and yeah. it's fine, you know, I'll show off, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Carry it on my, on my shoulder. Carry it on your back like a man. Yeah, that's how we do it. I need a sled. Check this out, boys. <laughs> <laughs> So when they get older, it will because that's that's uh, that's what we did when in my house growing up was real trees, and so I love I don't it. know if we ever had a real tree. Like I think my grandparents did, but I don't think we ever did. Mm. I just go the Lowe's pre lit route. Yes, so I did, but I had to like do some wiring on it this year. Mm. Some wires that were broken for some reason. So Psh. I know. I just, do that. I know. That's what I was doing while everyone was decorating. <laughs> I was stripping wire, <laughs> splicing wire on the trees, and getting the lights to work. Oh, that's good. It was last year. It didn't work. Like, not all the lights lit up. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it was that's, one of those. And so cool. you look at it, um, and it's yeah. like, yeah. Just so, throw another strand around. <laughs> but it was already all the way up and, Ooh, you know, yeah. fluffed out. So this year, I'm like, before we get the whole thing up and fluffed, fluffed um we're gonna make sure these lights work mm. it's a good call we have uh my daughter does something or she did it last year and she did it again this year she bought an ornament that's like a has like a cavity in it and you write yourself a note this year put it in there and then when you put your decorations away for the year they sit in that box all year and then mm. you get it out the next year you read the note that you wrote yourself last year yeah that's cool. And then you write yourself another note. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So she asked us to write a note this year, so we might all partake. Yeah, I would. So That's cool. Yeah. You said something <clears throat> yesterday that just struck a big old chord with me. I hope it was a good one. It was. Okay. <laughs> it was so good. And because kind of circle back Mm -hmm. (laughs) to yesterday. Uh, It's awesome when the Holy Spirit connects and interweaves Mm -hmm. the messages. And this is even more unique because uh, your dad, Pastor Steve, Mm -hmm. shout out to Pastor Steve, holding it down. um, You know, he was doing Sunday school. Right. And then you were preaching. Mm -hmm. And then Wilburn, you know, so there was multiple people involved, you know, that didn't have a conversation before. Like, hey, let's set this up. At all. And, and you, cause you said during your message, but like when Pastor Steve was talking, uh, and just sharing some of those things, I, cause I knew what you were going to be talking about, mm-hmm. just, you know, the title or yeah. whatever it was, I knew what you were talking yeah. about. And he was saying some things. I was like, man, <laughs> yeah, this is good. Yeah. Like, this is, this is, this is it here. But you said something you, when you were listing kind of the things that we are mm-hmm. as a church and you said grace heavy. Yeah. Oh man. I was like. Isn't that so true? <laughs> yeah. Like, it is so, so true. And I've experienced that yeah. here myself. Yeah. You know, just personally. Yeah. You know, in the beginning and uh, and just throughout throughout our time here. Yeah, that that's a hard, that was a hard, like, list to put, it was easy, an easy list to put together, but it was a hard list to reduce to, like, seven, mm-hmm. you know, just, be, just like the Bible, you know, we all believe, like, a ton of things out of the Bible, but there's only, like, a handful of things that make us like a Baptist church, yeah, you know, but, you know, I was trying to like, because I want to talk about love, you know, I didn't put like necessarily love in there. I, I had like <laughs> love and grace heavy and I was like, ah, let's just make it grace heavy. And for whatever reason, that was the, that was what the Lord reduced that one down to. Let's just keep it about grace. Yeah. So, I love it. Yeah. And when we, when we, when we're grace heavy, we open ourselves up to willingly open ourselves up to just dive into people's lives with them. Yeah, and it was crazy because when when Sunday school was going on, I just like had this. I don't know what to, what to call it. Just I don't want to freak any our listeners. I had this like just this vision. <laughs> of uh cool uh, <laughs> it wasn't a good one <laughs> oh not cool <laughs> no uh because uh my dad was talking about how the lord allowed paul to be saved yeah even though he killed christians mm-hmm. right which is an awesome thought but then the the 
the thought of like what if somebody if somebody ever came in and did that here because he went into churches yeah and did that yeah like that jesus's love and grace for humanity is so deep and heavy that he would have still wanted to save that person who did something horrible you know i was just thinking about that and i wasn't thinking about it as anything like gory and gruesome here like i was just thinking about it just how awesome god's grace and love is Mm -hmm. and it was it was awesome just to think about that think about how how gracious he is to us so when he is he is and he gives more grace more grace (laughs) yes where sin abounds grace much more abounds. Yeah. So grace always wins. Mm. I think that's a good way to just kind of tie a bow on it. Yeah. Grace wins. Yeah. Always. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. (laughs) Thanks for joining us on The Flow. Please like, share, and follow. And remember, don't fight the flow.